What's going on, guys? Welcome into the Fantasy Tab. Today, we are going to be doing our waiver wire pickups for week six. But before we jump into that, let's jump into you guys subscribing into the YouTube channel because some of you haven't done that yet. And don't worry, we've noticed. We know who you are. So hit that little subscribe button. If you're new, hit the like and the subscribe button. Uh, and then everyone, please hit that bell icon that's above. Make sure you guys don't miss anything that we're releasing or any times we do a live stream where you guys can jump in, ask questions, get involved, uh, and be a part of the show yourselves. And we remember, we always do our Sundays, Sunday live streams at one o'clock to answer all your start sit questions moving into week six. Now, before we start the waivers, let's understand that we do have our first week of bye weeks coming into this week. Uh, so if you have anyone on the Falcons, the Jets, the Saints, or the 49ers, they will not have a game to play. So they will not be getting you any fantasy points. Make sure they hit your bench. Uh, and if, yeah. Now, let's start off with the quarterbacks. Beautiful streaming options. Let's see who we got. And I'm going to start out with my lowest owned player in this position. Uh, that's going to be Davis Mills. He is also the riskiest play at this position. And if the other two players, the only time you're going to play him is if the other two players aren't available for you. But he is coming off of a beautiful three touchdown, 300 plus yard game against the New England Patriots that a lot of people counted him out of. The reason they counted him out of that is because he just came off of a four interception game. So he does have obviously that risk factor applied to him. He's a third round quarterback, a third round rookie quarterback. So we're still kind of unproven, still kind of just expecting the worst and hoping for the best, but he is going up against the Indianapolis Colts who have been a much more porous defense than them. They're currently playing the uh, Baltimore Ravens right now. And depending on how Lamar Jackson does tonight, they could end up being a top six in fantasy points allowed to the quarterback, which could give Davis Mills another great game. I don't think that they're going to be able to shut down Brandon Cooks the same way that we saw him shut down against New England, which gives him a great receiving option. And obviously, Cordero Patterson's there to light it up for everyone. Uh, he fought, comes with like a quarterback two range. That's my expectations for him this week. But he does carry a quarterback one ceiling. Um, but also carries a very bad floor. So he is the most risky play on my list. Someone who's going to be a little bit more consistent for you is going to be Taylor Heineke. He's owned in 12.6% of leagues, which means he should be readily available for a majority of you guys. Uh, he's had multiple two touchdown, 250 yard games this season, which is a great baseline. Uh, and he's coming off a very, very bad loss on a not so stellar day against the New Orleans Saints. I do think we see him bounce back a little bit. And the thing that's going to help that is the fact that he's going up against the Kansas City Chiefs this week. He's a young, prove-it quarterback, so there's going to be a lot of expectations coming into this game. We saw how porous the Kansas City Chiefs defense can be for the quarterback. They are the best matchup for a quarterback so far this season, allowing more than 30 points to every quarterback that they've played against. So expect Taylor Heineke to have a quarterback one week and just ride him out. Keep him on your roster because he's had these flashes and we never know when he's going to pop off. And he does have some great matchups towards the end of the season when he gets into more of his divisional games. Moving on to the next guy, and he's the safer pick with the lower ceiling. It's going to be Matt Ryan going up against the Miami Dolphins. And I don't want to say we just saw what Tom Brady did against the Miami Dolphins this week. Five touchdowns, an incredible week where he benched himself nine minutes into the fourth quarter. It could have had a record-breaking day with how we were playing. But Matt Ryan should be able to come in with a very, very solid floor as a high-end quarterback, too, with the opportunity against this Miami defense, who's just been one of the worst defenses in the league, one of the best to play fantasy quarterbacks against. Uh, so expect the Miami Dolphins to allow Matt Ryan to have another low-end quarterback one day, uh, but don't expect Matt Ryan to sneak his way up into the top five because I just don't see him uh, making it there unless he decides to scramble in for a touchdown this week. Jumping over to the running backs, we got Devontae Booker taking over for Saquon Barkley, who is more than likely missing this week and possibly some more after that. I know everyone saw the pictures going around of Saquon's ankle that looks like it's a, there's a boulder underneath his skin. Uh, but Devontae Booker came in last week, got his 16 carries. He didn't do amazing. Uh, he, he averaged two and a half yards per carry, but, but, but let's give him a full week going into it. Uh, I do expect the Giants to be playing a little bit better this week. And I think that you can expect him to at least be someone you want to hold onto your roster because he's going to have multiple weeks of work behind him. Uh, obviously we saw him work early part of the season and did have some productive games. So he's definitely someone that you want to roster. And depending on how weak the running back you are, he's someone you could fit into the roster right away as a flexible option and a really, really low end running back too, with some upside. He 
obviously did get a lot of those three passes, which does help his total upside and what you can expect from him, especially in PPR formats. But he did get the touchdown too, which is great. One of the reasons that you get that high rush total with a low yards per carry is he had three goal line carries back to back to back, only getting one to two to negative one yards on each one of those. So he was trying to get the touchdown and he ended up getting it later in the game. So it's great to see he's getting the touches that are important. Uh, so let's see what happens as we move further into the season and how much they actually end up using him. Uh, another running back you can grab. This is another one that's more of a desperation pick, but it's going to be Chris Evans right now. Joe Mixon's more than likely going to be out again this week. Saman J.P. Ryan is going to be out, which means that Chris Evans is going to be the lone back in that backfield. And it's a pretty hefty backfield. I mean, they seem to be handing out the ball a lot to whoever's there. My biggest concern is that we're just not going to see Chris Evans have that whole backfield to himself. There are so many free agent running backs out there that it's more than likely that if Mixon is not able to play this week, they do sign someone uh, off the practice squad, hurry up into it, and it will be a timeshare backfield with Chris Evans in there. Um, but best case scenario, you grab this guy off the waivers for free, if not very, very cheaply, maybe a 5% fab budget. And you're looking at someone that has a possibility of having a 20 plus carry day as the only running back in that backfield. Uh, so I think Chris Evans is someone you might want to pick up, hold, and just see what happens as we get closer to the week. Um, if it's looking like he's going to have that full workload, do not play him any more than a flex. You're looking at low, low, low upside. Uh, I'm sorry, high upside, but very low floor if they just decide to not use them and go a different route altogether and, or just go to a really, really heavy passing game. Another running back you guys can grab. This guy's going to be a lot more percentage owned, mainly on the fact that – or the only reason I'm really including him is he's a rookie. It's going to be Michael Carter out of the New York Jets. Going into a bye week, you should not – if he's available for you, you should not have to play – pay much for a fab there shouldn't be a lot of people jumping on him he obviously just came off of a great week um but i think michael carter has shown that he's starting to take over that backfield more and more each week he's had more and more of a snap percentage he's gotten more of the target the share percentage as well as be continuing to get more pass catching work each week uh, as the jets move forward they should be seeing we should be seeing a lot more of michael carter and he's someone that you need to start rostering for the end of the year when he does take a huge chunk of that thing and turns into out to be an absolute monster. Uh, look for Michael Carter, bench him, hold him. Uh, don't start playing him every week. But I do think that he carries a low-end flex option for you uh, starting last week. Going over to the receivers, we got Kadarius Tony. If anyone remembers from our pre-draft episodes, this was my favorite receiver coming into the year until I saw he got drafted by the Giants. Uh, and you saw why this week. He's an absolute stud. He's just not going to be in an off a situation where he's going to be the number one receiver on that team. Again, this year, probably. Uh, Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton both have an opportunity to come back this week. It's trending the way that they are. Uh, Kenny Galladay likely not going to be playing this week, which leaves Kadarius Tony as the number three receiver on that team. And after that 189-yard day that he just put up, it's very likely that we see, uh, whether it be Daniel Jones or whether it be the backup, we might see Kadarius Tony get targeted a lot and still be used in an effective way. And all it takes is him to get into open space, and we're looking at an absolute monster. Hopefully he can stop throwing punches and we can get some more football out of him. Would have been great to see him break 200. Uh, another receiver you can be grabbing is going to be Marquez Callaway out of the New Orleans Saints. Another guy who's going to be on bye week this week. So if you end up not grabbing him this week, check back about midway through the week. Uh, people won't be picking him up uh, due to the fact that he's – uh, going into a bye week, but he just came off of a solid day, so uh, you might have to pay up for him come this waiver run. Um, but he's someone that, with Jameis Winston heating up, he can fill a very, very risky flex position for you, as we see. He does not get it every week. He is someone that has burned a lot of people waiting for the week we just got. But all it takes is Jameis Winston to get into a rhythm, and you're looking at someone that could get a touchdown 80% of the weeks going forward, but a very, very low expectation. Definitely a risky play when you put him in there, but does carry somewhat of a nice ceiling for you. At 55.2% owned, we're going to be talking about Hunter Renfro, someone who should have already been on your roster because he's starting to get picked up in a lot of leagues, but he is someone that has been carrying an incredibly consistent, flexible play every week so far. The past two weeks, he's been getting targeted eight times or more and has been a fairly solid stud looking to be that number one true receiver in that Vegas offense. Um, obviously, we saw Brian Edwards get his work. We saw Henry Ruggs get his work. 
but the only one that's consistently getting it every week and at a solid enough basis is Hunter Renfro. Put him in your lineups. You don't need to play him, but he's someone that can fill in, especially in bye weeks when you guys might have someone like Debo Samuel or you might have someone like Calvin Ridley sitting there. Uh, both of those guys not playing could slot you in this week. Uh, and someone else who, if you haven't grabbed him yet because maybe you haven't caught our last few episodes, Tim Patrick. I told you guys that he might not be the best play this week, especially with what was going on with the quarterback situation. He completely proved me wrong. Tim Patrick, someone that needs to be on all of your rosters, at least again, in that same situation as the Hunter Renfro, he's getting the targets. He's getting the catches. He's being incredibly consistent so far this season. And regardless of the matchup or the quarterback situation, he seemed to always get about four to five catches a game, 40 plus yards. And then all, you know, sometimes finds himself in the end zone. Uh, we saw it this week. The ball can go anywhere in Denver. Even Kendall Hinton finding himself for a touchdown, uh, which is incredible after what we saw from him last year when he got the start at quarterback in Denver. But I think that Tim Patrick's someone that you need to be putting on your rosters if he's available because he's one of the best streaming options in court and as the, at the receiver right now uh, for a low-end wide receiver three slash flex option. Coming into, coming into some streaming options for you, we're going to be bringing up the man himself, CJ Uzama, after balling out two weeks ago on the, on the Monday night game. We did not see him. Uh, be the incredible stud, but we did still see him get some few targets and be incredibly involved, especially as a tight end. This week, if a tight end scored 10 points or less, they could have fallen anywhere between a, I'm sorry, they scored 10 points or more. They were a top 10 tight end this week. Uh, so anyone that scored slightly less than 10 points was really not hurting you too bad. And I think the floor that all these guys are going to carry should be somewhere around that. Hunter Henry's my next one. He's 28.6% owned. And last week we saw him light it up against the Houston Texans. And it was actually the number one receiver for the Patriots this week. Uh, we know that the Patriots like to use their tight ends. And we know Hunter Henry was played, paid up for. Uh, Johnny Smith, also another guy that was added to the roster that cost them a lot of money. He did not seem to be getting as much work as Hunter Henry. And we saw a lot of people fading John Yu, uh coming into, I'm sorry, trending towards John you coming into the week when actually the play would have been Hunter Henry uh, after that target share this week and the comfortability you saw Mac Jones having throwing it to Mac, uh, Hunter Henry not so much just when he's open but times where Mac Jones was under pressure times where it was a third down times that actually matter in football where you want you where you're throwing it to who you trust and who you really really think can get you those yards you need and I think Hunter Henry is going to be someone that's going to be getting more and more involved each week Last guy on the list, we got David Njoku, a name we haven't heard in a while because we waited for a breakout for so long, uh, but I do think he's a great streaming option if Baker can continue to light up the field. Obviously, it was an incredibly high-scoring game this week with a lot of work on each end, uh, but David Njoku was someone that balled out over 100 yards on seven catches and seven targets, and you saw that huge breakaway catch he had. Um, obviously, you're not going to expect that every week. There's other guys there, Austin Hooper. There's, there's guys. There's other places for that ball to go. But he does bring you some sort of upside. Uh, and if he is finally breaking out, you know, it takes tight ends a few years to break out in the NFL statistically. Maybe this is the time and we might see a connection with David Njoku uh, and Baker Mayfield, being that we still have Jarvis Landry out. Could be another great week. Streaming option, again, high risk, high reward. Uh, so take it if you can. Don't if you can't. Make sure you understand when you're setting your lineups, there's times you can play risky players and there's times you're not. If you need those points, you need them. If you're not confident in the rest of your team, take the safer bet. If you are either going to get absolutely blown out or you think you've got a really good shot at winning it without that flex position, take the higher points. That way, if one of your studs fails, you're great. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. If you can, remember, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and then hit that link that's in our description. It'll take you to our Discord where you can ask us any of your start sit questions. Ask us any of your trade request options, or if you guys want to talk anything about fantasy football, football itself, betting, anything you want, there's a community for you in the Discord down below. Thanks again for joining